morning everyone and welcome to the Crypto Insider channel. I am the Crypto Insider, back with another cryptocurrency video for your viewing pleasure on March 28th, 2020. It's a Saturday and the world is in the throes of the coronavirus pandemic. We're going to talk a little bit about that today and some of the impacts that I'm seeing from working in the fintech space with the uh, traditional banks. And uh, we'll also talk about some cryptocurrency prices, as we do every day. Before we do that, uh, if you're a new listener to the channel, uh, what you're seeing on the screen before you is the confirmation tweet we get from at GoodXRP. Each day we send some XRP off to at GoodXRP. We donate a little bit for each new YouTube subscriber that we get. Uh, we sent six XRP today. Uh, they break it down, send it off to all those different charities, all those different Twitter handles you're seeing that in that green list. Uh, all good things, clean water projects, environmental causes, homeless veterans causes, neglected children causes, uh, St. Jude's is in there, uh, the dog rescues, all good stuff that uh, is in line with uh, you know my own charitable views when I'm not being the crypto insider and just out and about. So we love donating to at GoodXRP, and uh, we help them to get their mission accomplished, and they help us. Um, before we get into it, I should say that I am not a registered uh, financial advisor, certified financial planner, uh, tax accountant, stockbroker. I'm not selling any investment products. There's no snake oil. There's no placemats. There's no Patreon walls. There is nothing to buy, and... Uh, Except, except a good 10, 15, 20 minutes of listening to me aimlessly ramble. And you don't have to pay for that. It should be free. If anyone asks you to pay for it, let me know. Um, let's go to Live Coin Watch and look at the cryptocurrency prices over the last day. A couple of interesting things have happened. One, the Bitcoin dominance has dropped down to under 66%, where it had been holding steady 66% and higher for a few days. So that has decreased. Bitcoin right now is sitting at $6,100, so it's lost. It's lost about 7%. XRP up on the hour, 0.33%, but down 1.27%. Uh, percent over the past 24 hours but what's interesting is the divergence uh, you know there's been a little bit of a divergence in the weekly chart here from Bitcoin and XRP so uh, that's good news that means XRP is uh, being affected by other things outside of just the price of Bitcoin moving and that's what we want to see. I don't expect there to be a true divergence in the charts until we get down to around that 50% mark here in the Bitcoin dominance. Uh, if that happens, I think you'll start to see some of the coins stand on their own. Now, when we start looking at the percentages of gains and losses here in Live Coin Watch, one of the other interesting things I'd like to point out that I'm noticing is that um, yesterday when we made our video, uh, XRP was the biggest gainer in the top 10. Today, it's lost the least out of all the losers in the top 10. So over the past two days, it's gained at a higher percentage and lost at a lower percentage than all the other cryptocurrencies in the top 10. Uh, and probably the top 20, I just uh, haven't gone down through it all really that much yet. We're not seeing any huge gainers. Uh, we have alt positions other than XRP. I am uh, certainly a big XRP fan. You may even call me a fanboy, but we do have other positions we like. Tezos took a bit of a dive. It's down 9% uh, since yesterday. Uh, we also are a chain link. Uh, it's, it's down 7%. We like that uh, token as well. Um, and we like Hedera Hashgraph, which looks like it may have dropped a spot in the market cap list, but it's also down 7%. And, you know, I'm not too discouraged with a lot of these positions. Look, everything is down. Some stuff is down 12%, 9%. Uh, you know, it, it's just the whole market is pretty much down. We, all, we, we sometimes see a... Uh, a pullback or a, a depress buying and selling activity on the weekends for crypto. Um, and so it's it's not that unexpected that if you're going to see a drop for the week that it happens on, on the weekend. Uh, once in a while you'll get a weird turnaround and, and a run on a weekend, but it, do, it doesn't happen 
too terribly often. And I think if it does, it's normally like Sunday. I, I can't remember. Um, going to our Coin Alliance page, this, just five minutes ago, this was all green with overbots. So, this is how quickly this page can change. Uh, it shows you the moving averages. Our high uh, price over the uh, 24 hour period was 0.188 cents, or 18.8 cents, I should say. And uh, our low has been 16.6 cents. Right now, sitting at uh, 0.17183 um, and we've been saying this for a few days on the uh, channel I'm hoping that uh, uh, I, I personally I'm waiting to buy any large amount of XRP until after I see what Ripple does with the escrow release this month but um, uh, I really long term, I think anything under 30 cents is probably a good buy for XRP if you're planning to be a hodler. And most of us have been forced into hodling, uh, especially people that bought it at higher points uh, during the past two years of the down descending resistance. Um, also, let me know if you're um, able to hear me okay or not today. You know, I had some audio issues, and I'm glad that uh, someone pointed it out in the comments. So I rebooted everything, shut down some programs I, w I wasn't using. I changed some settings around, and uh, <laughs> and re reset the audio levels. You know, I always like to um, push it. Generally, if I'm setting an audio level for a voice... It's, I want to go as high, as loud as I can go without clipping. And so I, I've turned it back a little bit. So hopefully there's not as much crackling and clipping as uh, somebody said there was. Uh, but uh, thank you for your feedback on that. If you ever hear something weird in my videos, because I don't watch them after I make them. Uh, I just sort of edit them all together and put them out, uh, but I don't re-watch the final product. So if you ever notice something like that, feel free to comment. It, it'll help me out and uh, let me make some revisions. All right, so also, if you've been here since the beginning, you know that Saturdays we kind of talk about some things that maybe aren't in the news and maybe are just banking concepts or economic concepts. So. Uh, uh, if you go back and look, you'll see we have videos on Gresham's Law, and uh, we have uh, videos on mumps. So uh, just weird sort of things that, that pop up in the financial world that I've seen over my time uh, in it. You know, I, like I said, I'm, I'm not a uh, broker or anything, but I have worked in the fintech space for 17 years. And uh, I've worked in the support realm as well as the project management and implementation realm. Uh, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about what we're seeing with some of the major financial industries um, or financial uh, entities from the standpoint of where I work. And I don't like to give too many details away of where I work because I don't want them to start listening to my broadcast. And I don't want to, you know, it's very easy to piss someone off in the cryptocurrency realm and then to have them harass you because it's the Internet and that's the way the Internet is. So, you know, so I've just, uh, <laughs> I, I don't reveal a lot of details, but I can and I will if I ever need to for a specific reason. Uh, what we're seeing right now with Corona is a weird effect that I don't think anybody ever really planned on. So, in the course of doing work for a major financial entity, somebody with a banking charter that's active... Uh, there are a lot of files that are received every day from the Federal Reserve that have to be posted uh, to the bank, and then there are return files, there are item processing, meaning uh, checks and deposits come in, and people uh, m run these through machines, and the machines will kick out things that can't be read right, and then those will be entered in manually, uh, manual item processing by operators and all that work is batched every day and it's put into new files and uh, you know often batched or sent back out to the Fed depending on the files uh, and there are files that will apply floats to checking products uh, floats or holds to checking products 
So all this manual work and batch processing, um, a lot of the big companies that do it for other banks, because most banks don't do their own. Most banks don't have people sitting around doing item processing. They all pay just a few uh, financial institutions throughout the U.S. to do it, the, the big ones. Um, one thing that my company started doing several years ago is they will outsource some of that work to India. Um, it, because it, it's cheaper, obviously, and it cuts down on the amount of onshore staff that they have to have at data centers throughout the country. So some of the impact we're seeing now is that these outsourced places in India or wherever they've outsourced them to, uh, but India specifically, is on a lockdown. And some of these data centers that did this processing are just shut down with no warning. You know, uh, you know, people can't get there. People don't want to travel. And people can't defy the orders. It's it's not like... See, a lot of the U.S., if you're listening, is in a stay-at-home order. Meaning, if, your business, uh, if whatever you have to go out for is non-essential, you shouldn't do it. It's more of a guidance. But there's no martial law sort of quarantine lockdown. If, if just about any American wants to go out and do something, we can still go out and do it. Um, but, you know, we're, we're just... The only thing we've really shut down are big gatherings. But in India, or, or some other countries, when they lock you down, you're locked down. <laughs> you know, you don't go. So these data centers have shut down. Now all this work still has to be done, and it has to be done according to contracts that were signed with these huge, if you can think of the name of a famous bank, uh, were involved at some point. The company I work for is involved at some point. So now we've got these, uh, all this work that was done by these uh, outsourced places still has to be done. Um, now it's it's fintech. You know we're, we don't have abacuses in these places, and we're not putting beads out or anything like that. So we can bring the work back, and we can process it in the U.S. while these places are closed. But it's still uh, requiring a ramp up to sort of uh, do that, and all these um, all these onshore operators now have to learn the processing procedures and you know the the little individualized and customized ticks that these large financial institutions like. You know the people, um, the data centers in India know all that stuff in in their heads. But, uh, you know, it may not be written down in, uh, everywhere. So it's creating, it's creating some pain points. And I'm not seeing any major failures of the banking system. It's, uh, uh, but I am seeing the impact in where uh, some of the onshore people are really loaded up with a lot more work than they would otherwise have because of these worldwide uh, shutdowns. So, uh, you know, when you talk about that sort of... Um, I, I, I want to say meticulous processing compared to something like crypto that operates almost on its own. You know, when the settlement of all these transactions occurs almost instantly, uh, all you need is the internet to do it. So you can see the huge, just in those two examples, the huge benefits of a cryptocurrency compared to the traditional banking system and some of the things that it's subject to. And then, you know, when you have outsourcing too, uh, one of the things, you know, you, it, it's really odd to see some of the agreements made around the world. Even some countries that you would think as an American are advanced, some of these, some of these European countries, when you're signing contracts and stuff in them, um, there are countries, you would be surprised, where a bribe is a tax write-off. It's illegal to bribe somebody uh, to, <laughs> to further your business. Uh, it, it's, it's a whole different world, and you never know what's going to happen in, in other countries. You know, whether, whether there could be wars and things that to, to shut down your business. Um, I, I don't think, you know, and I don't know this, but I'm... I'm probably certain that the Pentagon or somebody in government 
have have probably run sim games of how to collapse the banking in the financial financial system the easiest ways to do it that sort of thing uh just uh trying to keep a step ahead of like terrorist groups and rogue regimes and things like that uh and i think um you know maybe cryptocurrency is part of the answer to that so i don't know those were just some weird thoughts i was having uh, after seeing the impact of of, uh, the coronavirus um that's pretty much it for my video today i'm going to pop up some additional videos so you can continue your crypto insider journey please stay safe shelter in place do whatever your authorities are telling you to uh like and subscribe uh there's my music um we will see you hopefully tomorrow thanks for stopping by